we were no longer the developers of or purveyors of advanced technology like we once were. Ah, those were the good old days. A lot of the great innovations of yesteryear were developed for military application, but so much today is now revolved around the consumer market. The great technologies that we enjoy using as civilians are not necessarily making their way into the military space, nor were they actually created inside the military space. So since the 1970s, the Department of Defense has actually not been outspending the commercial R&D marketplace. In fact, today it's three to one in favor of the commercial marketplace, and so that's why a lot of this technology is being developed outside. Well, that's sort of forced us to change our, our business model or our approach to how we would then do acquisition. Because if they don't need the government funding or if the government isn't actually developing the technology in-house, then we have to think about a different way to buy it than create. It's hard to work with DOD in terms of how long it takes to carry something forward onto a contract and then how long to execute that contract and then move forward. So with Defense Innovation Unit, a lot of what we focus on is empathy towards these companies who don't necessarily need to take Uncle Sam's money in order to be viable or the next big, great tech giant. We have to think about the way we engage with the commercial marketplace significantly different. We have to be faster. We have to work on business relevant terms, uh, business relevant uh, time frames. If we're going to capture their imagination and get them to work and partner with us, on our most vexing problems. So we came up with our business model and it's called the Commercial Solutions Opening and we've seen pretty good success with other organizations replicating it, especially if they're trying to engage with companies that we've been putting on contract fairly regularly. But how do we teach the people how to implement the processes, the governance, the oversight? What does it mean to actually recreate a new structure in order to achieve some sort of outcome um, that you're not otherwise getting in your current acquisition model. And so that really paved the way for the hacking acquisition or what we call hacker program, where we're inviting on a competitive detail two people at a time to come out here, learn our business models, learn our culture, so that when they go back to their program management offices as acquisition professionals, they'll have some sort of basis or successes or experiences that they can then apply as they try to recreate um, based on what it is that their acquisition outcomes are trying to achieve. To me it's awesome. I get to take all this knowledge and the different ways that these different programs are doing things and take this back to my unit and go, okay, here's one approach. This is what DIU is doing. Here's where we can pivot and turn or we can use the same thing or, and morph it to what we need, not following some far guidance that's made to build aircraft and not software. I think we got maybe a little lucky with the timing of when we showed up because it did happen that there were a couple of other uh, conferences or symposiums going on here in the Silicon Valley area that we were able to attend. So that definitely helped us spin up and see some of the differences between the traditional FAR acquisition processes that we're used to versus the DIU CSO process. So we are in a bit of an arms race today for the attention of these companies that are going to be the uh, purveyors of the next great technology, whether it's blockchain, artificial intelligence, or machine learning. And so what we saw at Pitch Day and what DIU is espousing to try to achieve is being able to work with them in a manner that is conducive to their own targeted goals and needs because the venture capital community or whoever's investing in them isn't going to want the federal government to be their predominant buyer. But we need to be a buyer uh, if we're going to be able to compete from a national security standpoint with those who have just as, um, if not an easier time, buying these technologies.